Okay, I'm looking at, uh, we're going to start to move to our top end here. We're getting really close, uh, close to splitting these cases. But I'm going to go ahead while I have the opportunity, and I'm going to remove a couple things over here since I have the motor. So you guys are going to have to bounce around on your lap sheet a little bit. I need my small snap ring pliers. Remember me talking about that snap ring that you want to make sure and remove so that you don't bust the cases? That's on this counter shaft sprocket here. How often do we reuse snap rings? bugger to me. I definitely violated the heck out of that one. We got our baggie. Okay. Now, you guys, I think you like this, me using the paint marker to make life easy, right? I don't want to have to think so hard, but Kelly made a really good point earlier that the last person could screw us, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for any uh, shims or any other problems. What would you mark I, on that for? To, so the gear, I know when I install it, I'll fa it'll face me. That dot just it's not a timing issue. That gear is an idler gear. It is not key to that thing. What it is is transferring the power from the kickstarter to the clutch basket. The clutch basket is connected to the uh, primary drive gear, which turns the crankshaft. So we're going to go through all those gears to get up here on our kickstarter. <clears throat> now, just to make life kind of um, difficult right now, I'm going to go ahead and remove my kickstarter assembly. You normally don't have to. You guys could just leave this in place. I just want to show you guys how. Now, if I get hurt on the camera, I'm going to be mad. So I'm going to go ahead here. Sorry. So this, this little guy's seized in here. I should be able to pop that up here. It's coming. May not have been out before. Oops. I want to just set this to the side here. You're going to notice in here, we have a detent back here. Can you see this cam back here? See that? So basically, as we ratchet around that, look what it rides against in the case. You guys can see the cam back here. And there's a stopper in the case so it doesn't overextend. This is what puts your Kickstarter always back to the same spot. Does that make sense? When you get done kicking it and it ratchets back up and it stops, that's on this cam and the stopper right here. I'm just going to, like I said, you guys don't have to take that apart. I'm doing it just for demonstration so if purposes. You don't have a Kickstarter, then you won't have that, probably. No. If you don't have a Kickstarter, no, you wouldn't have any of this. If you're electric start, you wouldn't need any of this. Okay, guys, I see another snap ring in here. I'm going to go ahead and get this off now. What if you have, like, an electric start motocross bike that has a Kickstarter? Then it will have it. But, it, but there's no Kickstarter on it. it just well, then it won't have it. The electric start drives off your flywheel. You can put a Kickstarter on it. Then you would insert it. Uh -huh. It's going to be different. I got another snap ring. I want to go with that idler gear. Okay. Because I know that could give me a problem. Now I have enough stuff removed where I can pull my shift shaft off. Now, this is, this is what was wrong. The guys that installed this last time didn't have this in here right. Remember how I was having a hard time finding neutral? They didn't have a spring hooked up in here, and it just kind of fell apart on me or the spring itself uh, is broke. <coughs> it's definitely no good now. Okay. So as I just pull this out, that's all there is to my shift shaft. I'm just going to go ahead and set that aside. One thing that I want to look for, I don't see it on here, is every one of these I can think of has a shim back here. I'm not seeing a shim. I'm concerned that it's missing. Stop it. Okay. This, uh, um, Behind here, there's usually a shim because we don't want this. This this is steel. Our engine case is aluminum, and I don't want to dig into that. So it's real common they'll have a thin uh, shim on there. So what we need to do is we need to, on our work order, we need to be concerned and write down uh, missing shim shift shaft with a question mark. Does that make sense of how you do that for notes to yourself? Then when you get done with the motor, you can go back. I don't want to stop what I'm doing right now to go look at a microfish, do I? I want to go ahead and just make a note that I'm concerned that I definitely need a new spring and that that shim is potentially missing. Now there's a nice steel washer on the back of that. That might count as the shim and I don't have to worry about it. Okay, I'm going to see right now I probably don't have to take this detent off, but I'm going to go ahead and do so anyway. <coughs> what you guys were just moving. Okay. Now taking this apart is easy. Putting it back together is the hard part. Now, this is 
probably going to spring up on me here. I'm going to use some leverage here. using just real slow light pressure on here. You guys can have me all come around when we get to this point so that if you're concerned if you're going to break it or whatnot. Get that off. Now notice I didn't force anything. I didn't damage anything. This is the part that's so important about the detent. Here's our little spring. Okay. What you have to know on every single one of these, well, I'm going to show you now, and I will re-show this in the future. This was our outside washer that our nut went on. Remember that? You guys saw that? Now, what you have to have is, do you see this little shim right here? This is what gets us into trouble on these. This is going against the aluminum case. If I lose this shim, what will happen is this will actually tighten down. Now, when I put the shim on here, do you see how I can do this? Okay, that's correct. If I don't have the shim in there, it's stuck. It's seized. When I put my bolt and I tighten against the case on this, it's going to lock up and then it's going to be stuck in whatever gear or it's going to be really super hard to shift. They're going to have to jump up and down that lever trying to get this to shift if you leave this little shim out. Sometimes this bushing will be made long enough that you wouldn't need this washer, but one way or another, how you can always test to make sure that you're good to go is sit and just simply do this with your hand, okay? And you're going to see that it can move around fine. I'll give you the spring and the nut. One last thing I see that might give me a problem here is these two bearing retainers. Ah, I shouldn't. That transmission fills to move on that. I should be able to leave those in place. These two washers right here are holding this bearing in place. If you were to leave those out, the bearing could walk out against the clutch basket. So that would be a problem. I'm not going to worry about the shift drum right now. I got a nice big old piece of gasket material in here. Okay. All right, go ahead and stop. Count that one.